Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Finally, we have some pretty solid information emerging for RTX 50 and the architecture for Blackwell, which of course, as many of you know, will be the architecture powering RTX 50, is a very interesting departure, but also bears a lot of similarities with Lovelace and some of the predecessors. We'll get more into that in a moment, but let's start out with the tweet. Um, which really is kickstarting a lot of this discussion, and it is from Copperite Seven Kimmy, and then we'll talk about more how all of this information fits together. So this is just a quick video. I'm reaching out to some of my sources for some more information concerning this, but I want to talk to you guys about this because the tweet itself and some of this discussion is really interested, uh, interesting. Excuse me. So I am curious to hear your thoughts about this. So of course you know what to do with the comments down below. But as I mentioned before, says Copperite Seven J100 is 88 gh100 is 89 gb100 have a basic structure like 810 and gb202 looks like 12 8. Now, it's imperative to realize, of course, that these configurations can change at any time. From what I'm hearing from my sources, there are some probable configurations that have been, you know, kind of banded around inside NVIDIA, but there is nothing that is 100% finalized. But this is probably going to be changing pretty soon. So what actually does that mean? Well, I'm sure some of you are already, you know, writing out what it means in the comments below, but basically we were talking about the configuration. So let's pick on GB202, shall it seems like a good candidate because it's going to be the one that basically ends up for us gamers RTX 50. So it basically is representing GPC, which is 12, and TPC, which is, of course, the 8. Now, from what we understand based upon rumors, I've released them as well as Copperdite 7, but I'll go more into what they were in a second. It seems that, generally speaking, a lot of the configuration is very similar. So there isn't a big difference, for example, in the number of SMK count for example with the TPC it looks like it's the same so this means you can do some basic math and we're looking at 192 SMs total now it's very difficult to know the exact configuration in terms of let's say RTX 5090 versus let's say a 4090 because they may not use as much of the die or they may use more of the die it kind of depends on how NVIDIA choose to operate, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But basically, with the full configuration anyway, it's a 33% increase. Now, one of the rooms that I think I was the first, and Copperdite 7 is now also stating as well, I think there are a few others, um, is that the structure of the GPU is kind of similar in terms of there's not a big upgrade in SM count. So that seems to be, you know, tallying up with what's being leaked here for the gaming GPUs are really stressing. But in terms of the overall SMs themselves, there seems to be a really big change. I was told that a lot of the legacy stuff is quite, well, it's basically just gone. Um, and so the performance increases essentially are gonna come from several means. One of course is just, well, the fact that there are extra SMs. So obviously that's helpful. But there's also a high clock frequency. I've heard 3 gigahertz plus is a goal, but it's really early at the moment to know what actually is achievable or will be achieved. And again, the architectural improvements that I've just mentioned. So there is a lot of ways that NVIDIA could really kind of ramp the performance up. There's a lot of stuff they could do with caches and other bits and bobs. And it's going to be very interesting because one of the things I heard is there's a new like bus structure which ties caches together. Unfortunately, it's really wishy-washy information. I don't exactly know what has changed. Just that, again, there is some, I think it was called hyperbus structure. But again, how that works, you can kind of guesstimate, but a guess is not necessarily equaling to reality, of course. Now, there are also um, some memory configuration bits of bobs here. So GB100 is using HBM, so it's 8192 bit, and GB202, which again is for gaming, is 512. I've heard there was also a configuration for 384, but Copperite 7 probably has more up-to-date information. So I will, you know, relay what they're saying here. It becomes very difficult, though, because this is most likely the flagship product. Now, there are some a lot of potential options NVIDIA have going forward. Um, I've put out a video recently discussing RDNA 4's performance, and in case you missed it, basically speaking, um, I will link the video down below, or you can search for it on the channel. But long story short, 
RDNA 4 will have N44 uh, and 48, but the high-end SKUs, as pretty much everyone at this stage knows, are dead. So they are going to wait for RDNA 5 for the high flagship product. So essentially the highest performance RDNA 4 chip is still going to lose in terms of raster performance anyway. Um, speaking generally here to let's say a 7900 XT or an XTX. So that basically means that Nvidia doesn't really need to try too hard initially. So from what I understand from the launch schedule, you're going to get in the second half of 2024 RDNA 4. That's a bit weird to say, but there we go. And then depending on who you believe, I've heard multiple different things at this point, but I think the most likely candidate for release for RTX 50 is basically some point in the first half of 2025. If I had to take a bet late Q1 or early Q2, but that is... I don't know. I've heard so many different reports. So DigiTimes is saying that uh, G, um, that uh, basically we're going to get the high end. Um, uh, come on, come on, brain, do the brainy thing. High end black worlds for server uh, launching late 2024, but that obviously does not mean diddly crap for gaming. So um, yeah. Anyway, the bottom line is. Uh, it seems like anyway, RTX 50 is going to launch and then RDNA 5 is going to launch after that, that same year. I've heard it's going to be late 2025. So it could be, let's say, 6 to 12 months, depending on how the schedules line up, which basically means RTX 50 would still be the relevant architecture from NVIDIA. So there is the question of, does NVIDIA basically launch everything initially or does it wait and do some kind of refresh, for example, RTX 50 Supers or what? Honestly, do not know the answer to that. It's going to be very interesting because presumably RDNA 5 is going to be really good. Um, I've heard RT performance um, is behind NVIDIA for RDNA 4 in a like-for-like -like comparison. So obviously I'm not talking about the 1490 versus, you know, whatever the hell they end up calling RDNA 4's highest end SKU because obviously that's not fair but I'm referring of course to a like for like SKU comparison but RDNA 5 allegedly has some really big updates to the RT performance so I'm going to be super super curious to see what the what the strategy is for NVIDIA going forward like one thing I'll say about NVIDIA they do not like losing and the thing is amd technically speaking they have you know all of this engineering effort and resources now essentially they've diverted from high-end flagship rdna4 into rdna5 so it's going to be very interesting like everyone says well there's no way amd can beat nvidia and you know i will i won't lie i think it's probable that uh nvidia is going to still be the fastest because i think nvidia are basically going to do anything oh like you need a gpu that's you know oh we need to create a gpu that's like you know nine billion watts and the size of you know an entire room okay it's only going to cost you like 25 million dollars like they don't care like they would create that flagship obviously i'm being you know just silly at this point but you get the idea they would do anything to have flagship performance i think um, with that said, AMD can still compete really well across a lot of different SKUs. And, you know, everyone said that Intel would never be beaten by AMD again, that it was all over. And then, of course, Zen came out, and then Zen 2, and then Zen 3. And Zen, uh, Zen 3 just made uh, Rocket Lake just look kind of bad. So, we'll see. I'm going to be very interested to see how all of this ends up uh, shaping up, though. But with that said, guys... Just as I said, a quickie. Well, well, quick for me anyway. Um, I didn't really have time to go on camera, so I apologise, but the next couple of videos will be on camera, and there is going to be a couple of very interesting exclusives. So, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.